Hello and welcome to a special series of videos from Nolect. It's brought to you in partnership with UV Light Specialist Clean Slate UV and end-to-end -end solutions provider Peak Rise X. I'm Paul Anthony. I'm the conference producer for Nolect and I'm joined by Dr. Carolina Kutras. She's Director of Clinical Research at Clean Slate UV. Uh, Dr. Kutras has got an extensive background in health research and over 10 years experience leading large government investments in research, global clinical trials and R&D activities. Dr. Kutras has kindly agreed to join us today to discuss the importance of infection control in the healthcare environment and how UV light can effectively deactivate harmful pathogens such as SARS-CoV-2. So Dr. Kutras, first of all, thanks for taking the time out to join us. I know you're very, very busy. Um, the first question should be, what risks do mobile devices pose if they're cleaned infrequently or improperly? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, there are many studies that um, show that high touch items, including mobile phones, can be a source for what we call uh, microbial reservoirs, uh, which basically are places where microbes can live and grow and could serve as a potential source of um, transmission of disease. So when these microbes infect a person, we call this whole process a chain of infection. If, if these mobile devices are poorly cleaned or not cleaned often, what it does is that it creates these reservoirs and really increase uh, the chances for drug transmission and getting sick. Now, with the increasing digital adoption in hospitals, um, the mobile devices belonging to healthcare workers can be a source for pathogens. And uh, there's his research showing that up to 21% of these mobile phones belonging to healthcare workers uh, can be contaminated with uh, pathogens, um, including MRSA, VRE, other types of superbugs, which can lead to nosocomial infections. And that's something that we would always want to avoid. And that's why it's so important to recognize that hand hygiene needs to be integrated with device hygiene to help minimize that risk of cross-contamination and ultimately break the chain of infection to make the hospital environment safer for healthcare workers but also for patients, staff and, and even visitors. So how are healthcare providers cleaning the phones at the moment, the tablets, their ID badges etc? How are they doing it now and how effective are the methods that they're actually using? It? There are no formal guidelines um, and we also know that in general device hygiene compliance um, is poor among healthcare workers ranging between only 13 and 37 percent of these healthcare workers reporting that they clean their devices and many reporting that they don't clean it at all. Traditionally chemicals um, and chemical wipes in particular have been used in healthcare for device hygiene. Obviously the use of chemical wipes Wipes can be time consuming because they do require a contact time as well as a drying time to be effective. So some manufacturers that will provide instructions and that contact time can range from one to 10 minutes, which is a very long time. And we also hear a lot of concern about chemicals damaging the expensive screens of these small electronics as well as other features of these devices and even leaving chemical residues after the drying time on the screens. But in general, when we think about wipes, what you have to consider is that human factor um, that can influence the performance. So the wipes will only be as effective as long as the instructions um, are followed by the user, which if they're not followed, we could lead to inconsistencies on the effectiveness in inactivating or killing the pathogens uh, on these devices. But there are a couple of additional considerations that are also important when thinking about wipes. First one is that they do generate a lot of waste and they can have a negative impact in the environment because they, are, they can be recycled, they can be reused, and it can be composted. And the second fact um, is that chemical wipes can also be irritants to the skin and eyes and just add another source of chemical exposure in healthcare settings. So we know from studies that occupational exposure to disinfectants can be associated to uh, with poor respiratory health outcomes, including asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease among nurses. And this is something that that we would want to avoid or minimize if we can. And Clean Slate uses germicidal 
UV light in their sanitizer. So how does UVC light affect the harmful viruses and of course the bacteria such as MRSA, SARS-CoV? So germicidal UV refers to ultraviolet C light technology that specifically targets the molecular bonds of the DNA and RNA structure of bacteria um, and viruses and induces what we call a molecular damage that prevents these microorganisms from replicating um, or duplicating. And the clean slate UV is a 254 nanometer wavelength of UVC, which is super powerful and, and, and certainly can completely inactivate any microorganisms that um, are found in the surfaces of the devices that go inside the clean slate. However, it's important uh, to know that uh, the UVC light only works through line of sight. So when the surfaces that have pathogens, they have to be exposed to UVC light so they can be properly sanitized. And then any users looking for UVC devices as a sensitization option should uh, also be looking for uh, what we call a 360 degree design that will allow the light to basically touch every corner and surface of these devices. And this type of device has been proven effective in inactivating uh, these pathogens that you mentioned, uh, including SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that caused COVID-19. And also um, there are a couple of additional features that are important. So light can generate heat. Uh, so users should be looking for devices that don't only so that won't impact the performance of the items that are placed inside the sanitizer. If you were in a healthcare environment, where would Clean Slate most likely be used? The Clean Slate is um, what we call a sanitization station that will um, provide maximum results uh, in preventing the spread of germs if used in combination with proper hand hygiene protocols. And that's because when the user place um, an item inside the clean slate, it will start a 20 second sanitization cycle and prompt the user to clean their hands as well. So typically the clean slate um, is placed in strategic locations that are always near hand hygiene stations at a point of care, as well as in high traffic areas. Uh, so the users are encouraged to improve their personal hygiene, which includes both hand and device hygiene. In terms of these critical care areas, um, typically these are intensive care, operating rooms, cancer wards, and all of these areas where strict hygiene protocols are in place and are essential for, uh, to patient safety. And high traffic areas usually include uh, entrances and exits, uh, canteens, ward entrances, a couple of other locations that are very common our conference rooms, nursing stations, and all these general areas uh, in public spaces that link critical and non-critical areas of the hospital. So you've mentioned, and you spoke about it a little bit earlier, that UVC works on non-porous surfaces such as phones, such as tablets. Can it be used to sanitize other items? Yeah, so the clean slate has been proven efficient in sanitizing non-porous surfaces on all cr critical items. And that would not only include smartphones and tablets, but also keys, um, ID batches, pagers, walkie-talkies, um, and an additional other items that you can find in the hospital as well. And it will not cause any damage to uh, non-porous materials. So if you, for example, have an ID badge with the lanyard or a smartwatch with the leather strap that can go inside the clean slate and will not cause any damage, the UVC light will not damage the, the fabrics. Our research and development department at Clean Slate is continuously conducting research on different types of materials, including porous and non-porous materials. So we continue to validate uh, the use of UVC light on different materials. Materials and we, um, we share our research on our website. So if anyone is interested, I would encourage them uh, to check it out and also just reach out with any questions. So the sanitizer, as you mentioned, only takes 20 seconds to complete a cycle, which to me sounds pretty quick. But there are no visible differences when you look at an item or a device when using UVC light. So how can a user be sure, Carolyn, that the cycle was completed successfully and that the products are now clean? Yeah, that's a very good question. With hand washing, you can actually see what's happening, but when you talk about a UVC device, you place an item inside and you cannot see what's happening. So um, that's why we test the efficacy of the clean slate using what we call validated standards that were designed specifically to validate the antimicrobial efficacy of sanitizing products. These standards, um, they are developed by the American Society for Testing and Materials 
ASTM. At Clean Slate, we use three standards mainly, the E1053, E1153, and E3135. They are endorsed by the United States Environmental Protection Agency. And um, in the industry, they collectively make up uh, for this industry consensus uh, while determining the um, efficacy uh, for UV sanitizers. So the tests itself are not conducted at Clean Slate. So we, to avoid any bias, we hire independent third-party labs and they will run a series of uh, microbiology and molecular biology testings to validate that the light will actually inactivate the pathogen. Um, in using this standard, uh, we have been able to prove that up to 99.9998% um, of pathogens, including MRSA, VRE, E. coli, C. difficile, and even the human coronavirus, including SARS-CoV-2, can be inactivated in the clean slate. And in addition to that efficacy testing, we also offer a feature that's called the built-in fail-safe. And what it means is that um, if the bulbs, if the light bulbs in the clean slate don't reach full power uh, that is required to achieve minimum efficacy, the device itself will not work. And through our app, owner or the authorized users can actually get a snapshot and, and diagnosis of the device status. So constantly monitoring uh, if the clean slate is working properly, if the bulbs uh, need to be replaced, and just everything that is going on in the device. So they can rest assured that uh, it is um, working and it is inactivating the pattern. It sounds an amazing product and I've got to say thank you very much indeed to you uh, for joining us today. Don't forget you can visit Pete Rysek and Clean Slate UV on Stand 16 where you'll be able to experience the sanitation power of UV light first hand and you can put a free trial of Clean Slate to UV. We'll see you in the next episode where we'll be discussing the effectiveness of UV light for our nurses working on the front line. For now Carolina, thank you very much for joining us. It's been a pleasure talking to you.